In today's video, I'm going to cover how to make bait slugs. Uh, you've seen the cannon that I've made, the uh, bait launcher. Um, it's designed to use one and a half inch ice slugs. And um, I'll be using these molds. And I'll show you the rig that I use. Uh, may not be the greatest rig, but I can get everything in here, including the weight, uh, the hook, bait, sinker, and a line, an access line to hook onto the, uh, to the pole before we launch it. So let me show you what I've got, and I'll show you how to make one of the rigs, and I'll also show you how to uh, get it all put together and um, fill up with ice. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to blend uh, a little bit of bait into the uh, mixture that we use for the ice, and um, the, uh, the theory is that as it melts, it'll create a little bit of a chum slick and hopefully uh, draw some fish in. So if any further ado, let me show you uh, what we're doing here. Here's a parts list for what we'll be building. I like to use flat weights for this. Um, they tend to hold better in the uh, surf, at least in my opinion. But we'll be using a four, five, or a six ounce flat weight, um, depending on the conditions you're expecting. Five out or six out circle hook, three barrel swivels, 80 pound test or better, uh, crimp sleeves and a crimping tool, then 50 pound test stranded steel leader, as well as 50 pound test monofilament. So the first thing I'll be doing is creating a small leader with a hook on one end and a uh, barrel swivel on the other. I'll be using six to eight inches of the uh, stranded steel wire and uh, crimping both ends on with uh, sleeves that are crimped on with the crimp tool. And those things are a little bit of a pain in the butt to get out of the uh, little case turn, which is why I have the needle nose pliers. Got one side on. Let's go ahead and uh, get the other side on here. So the other side is going to be a barrel swivel. And as you can see, I got three of them out. Uh, these are 80 pound test barrel swivels. I'll be uh, using them throughout the entire rig. get that crimped on and here we have the first step and that's the hook braided steel leader and a barrel swivel now we're going to get another six to eight inches of uh, stranded steel leader and we're going to crimp that on to the end of the uh, piece that we had just finished we get that crimper on and once we get that crimped, the next thing that's going to go on here is going to be the uh, flat weight, which you'll see is uh, run it right through there. This is what makes this a Carolina rig. Now, Carolina rigs, normally you'd have a bead on either end, uh, typically a red bead. And the reason for that is to protect the, uh, the monofilament and or not. But being that this is crimped steel, um, it's not really an issue. So I'm putting a barrel swivel now on the end of this. And uh, first, of course, I'm going to get the sleeve on there. Let's get that on there and get it crimped. So now we have a basic Carolina rig. The next thing we'll be doing is adding some monofilament leader. The reason for the monofilament is that it will be sticking out of the mold. When we slide the bait slug or bait bullet out of the mold, we'll be using the monofilament leader to tie on to the leader that's coming off the fishing pole, uh, which is also uh, actually 60 pound test. I think I've got about 30 feet of that on the pole. I'm using the uni knots. Uh, they hold up really well, and I think uh, the uh, line would break before the uni knots did. So let's get these uh, on here, and uh, you'll see what the uh, end result looks like in just a minute. Get that clipped. And, oh, whoops, wrong direction. There we go. <laughs> I wanted to pan out on that one. And let's have some fun. Yep, it slides back and forth just right. But let me grab one of these tubes and show you exactly, uh, exactly how this is going to work. And what you want to do is get the weight in first, because that'll be the front of the projectile when it's fired, uh, fired out of the air cannon. Bait next. Get the cap on. Of course, you want to fill it with ice or... Uh, a chum mix. The next step is going to be getting some bait on these and filling them up with uh, uh, water or a chum mix. I've got some frozen salted mullet here and I'm going to be cutting some nice fat chunks off of it 
uh, you can see that the uh, mullet is a pretty good size actually and I'm um, gonna split these up get these on the hook and uh, I'll be loading up four of these I've already got two in the freezer so I want to get four more ready for the next trip helps to have a good sharp knife I'm cutting through a fin there which is a little bit of a pain in the butt All right, so we got those four pieces ready. Let's set this aside. Now put it back in the freezer, actually. Save it. Bait's getting pretty expensive. All right, let's get these bait bullets loaded up. Now, first thing I did, and I didn't record it, was spray these uh, the inside of these tubes with menhaden oil. Um, two things that it does is it helps slide the uh, bait bullet out easier and the other thing is it acts as a bit of chum. If you don't have menhaden oil you can always use Pam cooking spray. Uh, key thing is to lubricate the inside so that the ice bullet will slide out easier. So I've got this one set up. Uh, weight goes in first. That will be the front of the bait bullet when it leaves the barrel. It will give it stability. Notice I have the leader hanging out the side. Uh, that way you can uh, tie the uh, leader from the pole onto it. Now I'm just demonstrating both sides being put on, but you would of course fill it up with water or um, chum first. Uh, these little end caps are interesting. Uh, they're made uh, for furniture. So I got these on Amazon. They're inch and a half end caps. They fit perfectly and they seal these things up really tight. There will be no leakage. I've already done this several times and not, I haven't had a drop leak out of the uh, any of these uh, bait bombs if you will so here we go we're almost done with this let's uh go ahead and finish this up and i'll show you what the next steps are i got this guy done and now for the fun part i've got this blender i picked up at walmart uh it's fourteen dollars so it's really cheap it's not the kitchen blender i would not do that my wife would kill me but uh, basically, I've got old chum, some shrimp, some clam, and uh, little bits of, uh, of uh, mullet in there. I'm going to plug this in and blend it up. It makes quite a mess, which is one of the reasons I have this cardboard underneath of it. But um, I'll use this to fill up the bait bullets. As you've probably figured out now, my microphone was not hooked up correctly to the camera when I was recording this. So I'm dubbing over the whole video. But anyway, we've got this blender uh, full of bait, and what we're going to do here is uh, basically grind the heck up out of it and uh, pour it into those tubes. Fun stuff. Nice milkshake there. Something you don't want to give your kids, or actually you don't want to give it to anybody or yourself. nice frothy sludge well one of the things i found out as i was making this stuff it makes a lot of froth and i rushed this one through i poured it in there with all the uh, foam but um if you let the foam settle down it'll work a lot better you could even scoop it off before you pour it into the uh the uh molds for the uh, bait bullets so here i am just basically filling these things up and what i will do is uh once they're all filled up I will cap them with one of those caps. Let me show you real quick what that looks like. Again, these were on Amazon. They were, they were fairly inexpensive. Um, they came in packs of 12. And uh, they're meant as furniture end caps, and, but they work perfectly for this. And what I've done is I let the froth settle in a little bit, and then I'm just kind of topping it off. So let me finish these off by uh, putting caps on them, getting them in the freezer. We'll have some nice frozen bait slugs or bait bullets, as you will. And um, take them to the beach and hopefully catch some fish. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, hit like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I promise the next time I won't forget to hook up the microphone correctly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.